Hello, welcome to the part time of the Mario like asset list. Uh, today I want to display points after we collect everything, not just Hello. in the UI. Welcome to the part time, and then I can hear myself. Thanks. Um, why is that? Why? Okay, one second. Some slight technical problems. Hello? I think we're good now. Um, so, yeah, so today I want to display points, how much points we earn. So, currently, if I just play the game, if we play, if we step on an enemy, we end up crushing them, and the points do add in the point section, but that's it. There are no other point integration. There we go, Boop. like so. And what I want to add is oh, what I want to add is a way for us to tell that the points are being added, and I'll do that by having a text component which will appear on the screen and then will slightly move up and then just disappear. Now, for before we move into that, I kind of want to add post processing. So in last part, I said that. Okay, this is going to take a while. In the last part, I said that I don't want to change how the assets look by default. I just want to, I guess, change like saturation and whatnot. And this is what we will do. So we'll add a post-processing effects by going into Windows packet packages and then installing the post-processing into the project. <coughs> This, yeah, this usually takes a while. Now, I wish I could do something else while this loads, but there is absolutely nothing I can do until it actually installs. Hello? Yeah. You do your thing. I feel like you're just stuck. It's frozen. I wanted to show how to add it, but now it's just not loading. It just crashed. Oh, are we done? Hello? God damn it. Please. Okay. I feel like I'll have to. Re oh, wait. Never mind. We're done. And I believe the way we add it is good to go into components. Is it uh, effects? No. What did I just do? I know I did some. What? Okay. Not like that. How do we add post processing? I'm, I remember it was in effects. Okay, whatever. Uh, what's important is that we have did add the post-processing into the object. We should have a, actually scripts that we can add. Go away. We should have, oh, there we go. Um, these guys. And I believe, which one was it? What was the script that I'm looking for? Am I still streaming? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we have. Interesting. Okay. Either way, well, we'll be playing around with this at uh, some other point. But now that it's added into the project, it will be ready for the next session. Let's do, do actually what we were supposed to do today, which is the the, the displayable text. So what we need is to create a 3D piece of text. So if we go into, hmm, do we make a 3D text or do we make Let's let's see how a 3D text will look like in scene. And then if I don't like how the 3D text looks, we'll just go with a, a 3D canvas instead. 
So let's put a number down here, like 50, and make it, let's just change, it looks really hard to see. It's too big as well. Maybe for ten. Where size? Twelve. See, this is so hard to see. Why is it so blurry? Okay, let's try doing the three D. The canvas method. No. So I'm going to create a new canvas. And we're going to call it the text canvas. What was it? The points. Canvas point. Let's put a. Let's set change this to scale. Change it to word space. Just reset the position to zero zero. Where is it? Somewhere in here. Now let's attach a um, text component to it. Just drag this canvas. Oh, please just wait. Make it smaller so it fits within our scene. Let's see, the worst case scenario, we all just have to use a change to Text Mesh Pro. Because Dexpress Pro is better at doing these things. Oh, no, you stay full size. Let's change you to fit maximum one. No, okay, so this will be way too small. So the best thing we can do is actually go with this guy. Although this is so little, like the visibility on it is so. Actually, it's not that bad. But why is it so blurry? I, I'm just going to do a click. Google. <clears throat> oh, something, but maybe someone can help. What do we have here? Oh, I see someone does have a, a character size of text mesh as minimum character size. Okay, there we go. So I keep it zero zero three and then have a really big font. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That's a really thank you, internet person who figured this out. So now we have this sorted. We actually gonna keep it as white. Uh can make it slightly smaller though. Mm, maybe even more like this. And we'll put a plus in front. Maybe even smaller. Let's put it next to our enemy. Okay, let's make it 200. Yeah. So what's going to happen is we'll just have this text component that'll just go up. So this is going to be text mesh point display, like so. We only gonna have one of them because we don't need to have more. And basically every single time we step on an enemy, one of these will appear in that place. We might be actually we might, I might actually pull them in instead. Um just in case we do hit several enemies at once. So let's create a new game object here and add in our pooling script. And to our pooling script we're going to add our little mesh. Uh, actually, it needs to be a prefab first. So let's go into prefabs, drag in our text mesh here, go into this game object, and then text mesh in here. This one can be removed now. Let's call it the uh, point text pool. Why is it pop? Destroy block particle pool. There we go, like so. Uh, for this, we're going to set it to about two. I don't think there is going to be more enemies at once, regardless. 
And let's create the script for this actual text of what we actually wanted to do. So all we want to do is to do is just slightly flow up really slowly. So let's go into our utilities and scripts and just type in a floater. Drag in our floater here. Now, one thing that we'll always want to have is make it at the front, the Z. I'm not sure if it will always render first. That's why I want to make sure it's ahead of the text. What is it? Minus. So we'll just keep it at a minus one constant. It's a bit like 2D layering, I guess. You can use it that way. So we're going to disable all of these. Just, let's just add an update for now, and we'll just do a simple transform dot position is equal to transform dot translate, and we just want to basically keep our original x, so transform dot position dot x. But we but we do want to move up constantly. Where did that go wrong? <laughs> what? How do I do it properly? Can I just oh can I just do transform dot translate and you can just do something like this? Uh, okay, let's add some value here, like a private float uh, float speed. Very simple script, and then just times everything else by see daisy by our float speed now let's give this a test see if it does exactly what we want it to do which it should there you go a uh, very simple script like that <laughs> so another thing that we can do is actually play around with its alpha transparency um, so what we can do is we can constantly move it up, right? So if we go here, what we will need to have is the color of the text. So we'll need to have an access to the text mesh components. So let's do private, where are we? Text mesh. Text mesh, uh, mesh, and on enable. Cool. On enable. Why can I not? Oh, I already have it. Okay, that's dumb of me. So on enable, we'll do if mesh. Actually, let's just make this as a serializable field. So. We'll, by default, have that connection. And what we'll do is, when we first open up, we will set up the transparency of this to max. And what we actually need is the mesh renderer, really, of it, not the text mesh. So we will do mesh rip. Don't do that. Mesh renderer, like so. And then we'll do, I believe, mesh dot uh, material dot color and then you're just gonna set it to and what would white be is white a zero or a one I believe it's just a one so we're just gonna do one one we'll see in a second and then the final one should be the alpha no 
my fingers are off today. <coughs> like this. So let's have a look at it. Yeah, so we, of course, we didn't assign the mesh renderer. So let's drag that in. There we go. And now what we also want to do is we want to set this to zero just to see what's going to happen. So what should actually happen is this should be invisible instead. Let's have a go. Yep, there we go. It's invisible. So now we know what we need to change and how we need to change it. So what we can do is essentially just lerp between our color. So we could do... Could we do something like this? Material color dot lerp. How do we lerp, lerp through a color? Or can we have a color that we just lerp through? Mm. But essentially what we will have is by the time we finish, this will be set to zero like so. <clears throat> I guess what we can do is just do get ourselves a color and just learn the color, which will be easier. So we'll do a private color and let's just call it the um, text color. We're going to make it equal to color.white. And we will do color.white here. Or actually, on enable, we'll just do this and we'll make this equal to the text color. This looks weird. There you go. So this is our initializing. And then what we'll do here is we'll just lerp through the color that we've attached to it. So we'll do lerp to color. Well, text color. Oh my god. Terrible. And we'll just do color not lerp like so. <clears throat> and what we really want to do is we want to have well, I guess two states that we can lerp through. I don't know. Let's preset them here. It's going to be easier to do it, actually. Let's just do it like this. Private call. So it's going to be the before lerp. And then... One, 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 zero. So we have one, 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 zero. And then for the other one, just to show, we will have one, 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 which is essentially the same as that color here. So <clears throat> what's going to happen here is our text color at the start is going to be R. Or actually, can we do this? So let's get rid of that. So when we start, it's going to be R before. And so we'll do uh, is before lerp, and then we'll do after lerp. And then we need to do <clears throat> the, um, the load time script. We actually have something that lerps a lot. We do a lot of lerping, actually, within our project. So all we need to do is just find how we lerp every time and copy it. That would be, there you go. Or we can just do a little count F2, one second. And then after we reach our lerp in a second, we can just disable this object. So let's add a private, no, no, let's add a function which will disable this text after some time. So let's add a private void uh, disable color like this. And what we'll do is just this dot transform dot. This dot game object dot set active false, <clears throat> and we're just going to run invoke a function that will disable it after this amount of time, or we could just put it in a coroutine instead. Yeah, let's just do it as a coroutine. So let's just do a start coroutine on enable, and this is going to be our coroutine here. So we'll just do a private enumerator, and this is going to be the 
uh, color lurker. And this is the color team that we're going to start off with. Um, yeah, so at the end we disable the object, so we don't get any problems. Throughout this we will lurp between this color. We'll do this inside of a while loop, like so. <clears throat> yes, packages, whatever that means. And just like with our little blocks, we're just going to lerp the exact same way. So if we look at the destroy block script, we had a um, wait time, and then we had another one, which was the what's it called elapsed time. So we'll literally just copy this entire function here. And that will be our entire, I guess, uh, lerp mechanic. So if we paste this in here, and we, of course, replace this with that. Well, The best way to copy. There you go. And now all we have to do is just add two new variables. So our elapsed. Uh, so we'll have float elapsed time, and we're going to set that to zero. Then we'll have a float, and it's going to be the wait time, and that's going to be equal to for how long we want our. Is this not spelled the same way as this? No. And we want to have for how long we're going to actually have this loop go on for. This can go away now. And then, so that's going to be just going to go for two seconds. Where did I know? Oh, there we go. So now we have our color set that lives between our def default and after state. We add in and we should end, and then the object gets disabled. In the meanwhile, the object constantly moves up. So moves the object constantly upward. And then what else do we have here? Sets the color to the default value and starts the color change coroutine. The default color fully white. No transparency. Fully transparent white mesh component that changes the color. How fast the object flies upward. What else do we have here? This can actually go into a single function like this because it's just a one liner. Yep, like so. This. Uh, function dot changes between non-transparent to fully transparent color and then disables the object. There we go. Actually, we're missing another thing here, but let's just test this first. There you go. So see, we it's slowly disappearing. What we are missing now is everything that's got nothing to do with um, the actual, well, the movement and the visuals. So what we actually have to do now is, what we're going to do now is set points display. So we need to change the text, basically. So we'll do a public void set point display. And we actually do need to reference our mesh renderer for this to happen. So let's make a new line here, private. What is this? What's the object called? It's called text mesh. So text mesh like this. And we'll call this the, uh, well, text mesh. I'm going to do the exact same here as here. And I'm just going to set it to null so it doesn't give us the yellow warnings. The um, use for modifying the text value of the mesh. And what's going to happen here is we're going to pass through a integer, and that's going to be point amount, like so. so changes the points text to desired amount, like so. 
And now that we have this, we will do a our text mesh. Hello? I call it test mesh. Oh my god. Uh, text mesh dot text is equal to we'll always put the plus sign and then we'll just do pull point them out. Mm -hmm. Like this. There we go. And that's all we need for this. Of course, now we got a random error because I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? <laughs> Come on, the error is not there before. Where is it missing? Okay. Text mesh. Okay, text mesh dot text is equal to and what was I doing? See, I completely forgot. Oh yeah, we're gonna have the plus sign plus point amount. And this can be a single liner as well. There you go. With this we have the exact point done, so controls uh, floating uh, floating transparency and point display of the 3d point mesh okay then the name is wrong this should have been the entire script for the thingy but i don't know if i should do it separately at first it doesn't matter anymore anyway so let's just drag in our component into here apply and now that this is done we need to make sure that everything that displays a point i think everything that displays a point should have a common nope it doesn't okay so what displays points there should be two scripts that display points i believe is that there's the coin script and then there's the enemy collision so we can forget about all the other ones So, where is, when is this being called? In here, okay, here. So what we'll do is we will get a reference to this object, which is always in here. So we'll do private pooling pool. So this is going to be the um, text pool. Now, we will only pull the text when we actually add points. There is no need to do it at any other point. And so that will be is equal to game object find. And that's going to be point text pool. And then that will be dot get component. And that's going to be pulling like so. And then we'll do text pool dot. Get pool object like this, and we'll do a game object pool object is equal to this, and then we'll do pool object dot transform dot position. We want to have some kind of a, I guess offset slightly from our enemy, so we'll let me think. What is an offset? So this is where our gomba is. Let's just do 0 0.25 for now. And we'll just do this dot transform dot position. And then we'll do pool object dot transform dot position dot x is equal to plus equal to 0 0.25. Can I do that? It, will that work? No. Plus 0 0.25. Can we do that? No. Okay, I guess we can't just assign away, can we? No. Okay, let's just create a new vector. New vector three. This dot transform dot position dot x plus zero point thirty three f. And then 
stuck transform dot position dot y stuck transform dot position dot z okay with this we actually we don't want to have it for coins do we or do we i don't know it's just a tough one let's just keep it for everything that means we'll need way more than just two pulled from the start more like five Okay, so once that happens, is we'll just do pull object dot set active true. And with this, we have its correct position. I'll actually um, we will actually set our z to a minus one. It doesn't matter what they're on; we'll always keep it to minus one, so it's in front of the uh, screen rather than at the back. We can actually add a little bit to the y position as well okay now let's copy this add it into our enemy collision where we get the points which is around here and also get the reference to the text pool like so text at this place how many points we've earned text at this place how many points we earned like this and now let's press play and see if the system works should be no errors hopefully look oh well, that should have killed us really okay so i feel like we're getting an error many errors Ah, particle. So I changed the name, but I didn't realize that I was actually using the name as part of the code. So I just need to update that right here and quick. And that should be good enough. The collisions are not perfect on the enemies. That's something else. Ah! There we go, see? Uh, so we get the nice text up here. I don't know about the offset though. Maybe slightly higher. Where are we? Especially on the coins. Maybe not on the enemy, but on the coins definitely. Yeah, I like it. Okay. So, yeah, with this, we've added some kind of a visual representation to uh, the points that you've earned. We need to add sounds. So there's, well, let me check a, a little. I actually made a list of things that I kind of want to add. So we need to add, oh, we still need to add the player growing. So, and so we are displaying the uh, the text now, which is great. I want to add something that will transition between our losing and winning. Right, I'll just quickly share my ideas as this is already the end of the video. We're not going to keep going. So I was thinking of having some kind of an effect that um, essentially what it does is it just fills through the screen and then like this, something like this, very simple. So it does this when we lose. And then it opens up, and then the game loads. Uh, it's very simplistic, nothing hard. It, in fact, it will have to be at the very bottom, like so. And then, of course, if it's game over, it will just stay black and then load into the final screen. So that's kind of something I would like to do, well, at some point next. Maybe even do this off screen as it's a little thing. Adding sounds is definitely big on the list, but for that I need to do some research. So if I'll have some time today, I'll do the sounds and then tomorrow we'll do the sounds. If not, we will do something else uh, tomorrow, like maybe the platforms. But yeah, that's it for today. We've progressed. I'm very happy with that. Um, once we finish working on every single mechanic that I intend to add, only then I'll do level work. 
And I'll keep that off screen so that if someone actually wants to check the game out, play it, that'll be a surprise. Uh, fix for today. And I'll see you 